Hey guys, Michael Butler. Welcome back to Books on the Beach. Hey friends, Michael Butler here with Beyond Publishing. We are so excited to have fiction author Emmy Kruger with us today. And Emmy, it's so great to have you from Oregon. You're joining us there and so excited about the new book, Dust and Blood. Tell us about the book. Okay, so the book is really fun. I had a lot of fun writing it. Um, it was an accident. It was actually a college project that I did, and it just turned into more of a manuscript as I went through. Um, Dust and Blood is about the main character, whose name is Jedediah McKay. He's the main character. He's 16 years old. And he learns that life is not easy, but there are friends and other situations that can help you get through even life's toughest situations. So I really wanted to touch on that in my book. And I didn't realize that's what the moral of the story was until I really got into it because the characters talk to you as you write, especially for me. So it was really cool to watch Jedediah grow in this book. Now, you're intimately acquainted with these characters. Uh, I know you've taken three years to work on the book. I'm, I'm on your Twitter account right now. And uh, basically, it's an, it's an Old West book set in the Old West of the 1800s, but it's a genre you don't hear much about. And in a lot of ways, I think you're pioneering in this genre of supernatural fiction. You know, as a first-time novelist, you've told me that you're intimately acquainted with these characters. You've been working on this book for three years. Um, Tell us a little more about the times you hit the wall and, and times you had friends encourage you. What was it like going back and redeveloping chapters? And now that you're at the point where you, we're about to help you bring it to market, how does that feel? I am still blown away. I never thought I would get this far. And there were so many times I was hitting my head against the wall. And I go to a writer's group every week on Thursday. And that's really helped me encourage myself and others to write, even though it seems kind of difficult at the time. Um, my biggest problem was the secondary character, uh, El Diablo, and he really is very difficult. He doesn't like to talk much, so sometimes most of his chapters I had to go back and rewrite because he just didn't talk. <laughs> so I had to wait until he was ready to talk. I sound crazy, but it's true and they really come to life in the pages. So it's like you're channeling their voices through your head. And, um, you know, I'm on your Twitter account now, and some of your most recent tweets, you say, why do I write? It's my passion. I crave to put words on the page. But it says here, too, you were, you were influenced by some great, great influencers and some great writers yourself and some great movies. Go into some of the influences that, that helped shape the ideas. And I know you did a lot of research uh, but tell us a little bit about the formation of this book and some of the influences that were important upon you. Well, when I first started, you know, I had to beg my best friend to sit down and watch a whole bunch of Western movies with me. And out of all of the Westerns I had watched, the Clint Eastwood ones were the best ones. My yeah. favorite was Pill Rider, and that particular character he played inspired a different character that shows up in the book. I won't say anything else, but he's in there. Oh, come on. And Tell us. We want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have to read it. Um, but he's, he's really been a great influence, Clint Eastwood has. And I also like to read um, Anthony Ryan with his new Tower Lord series, the Raven series. Okay. Um, I love the way he writes, and it's perfect. Most of the books I read are fantasy. They're not Western, which is why I was really surprised that I wrote a Western instead. But I really like to touch on the supernatural world since a lot of people don't really, well, they know about it, but they don't really write about it, if that makes sense, unless it's a religious thing that they do. So, Yeah, I think it's a groundbreaking uh, genre. And I want you to speak a little bit about who the book is for. I mean, you've had a lot of parents ask you, oh, is this a great book for my teenagers or my adolescents? Kind of give us an idea of, of uh, the, the book rating, so to speak. How would you classify the age? Um, I would probably do rated R just because um, it is realistic in the fact where if someone gets shot, they're going to bleed. Um, mm -hmm. 
And you're also dealing with supernatural beings. And, and maybe pour some to... whiskey on that gunshot wound, right? And they'll drink exactly. a little whiskey and say, <laughs> say a few choice words or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, El Diablo, as readers will learn, he's very um, colorful <laughs> when he does talk. So uh, that's one thing that they'll discover. But it fits him. So it, it was okay to put it in there for him. Um, I would definitely rate it as an R movie if it were to be a movie. Just for the sheer fact of some of the brutality that's in it. Because a lot of things back then were not so civil. So <laughs> you know how that goes. It's like how the West was won. I grew up on Westerns yeah. and I, I love that whole pioneering thing and you've really opened it up. Now this is a hundred thousand words. Somebody's not going to sit down and read this in an hour unless they're a speed reader, but right. uh, what, what's the best way to consume this book? Who, who do you think is going to consume it and enjoy it the most? I think my goal is to have this projected toward readers like myself because I like to read books that are realistic uh, in the fact that um, if you're in a battle and swords are going everywhere, people are going to get hurt. Like Anthony Ryan described a certain battle just perfectly because it's, it's not pretty. So I wanted to do that as well as uh, project it towards more of an adult audience. Um, definitely not a teenager book. I wouldn't recommend it to a teenager. So maybe 20s plus, I would say, would probably be okay reading this book. I know the initial reviews we're getting back from readers, and, and you're getting as well, is, is people are loving the book. They're, they're sharing the book. They can't put it down. Um, is, the, is there another book coming? Give, give us some insight on, I mean, because there, there are some great moments in this book where you surprise us, you shock us, you leave us hanging. And, and, and some of the characters, I mean, there's twists and turns that we don't really expect. Give us some more about what's coming and um, what can we expect. Well, let's see. I do have a second book planned after this one. And then I also want to do a prequel, which will involve El Diablo. It will be his prequel. Um, and that will definitely be something that will be fun to write. But the second one is going to get a little bit more serious. Not like the first one isn't serious already. But the second one is going to be more dire for Jedediah and El Diablo to figure out how to overcome their obstacles. So... This will be a very interesting and fun ride for both of them again. Dust and Blood is the novel. First-time author, Emmy Kruger. We're so excited. You can see the book cover there. Uh, I just want to say your designer did an awesome job on the book cover, and uh, it gives a real feel on what's on the inside of the book that you've written. What did you do when you were, when you were stuck at those moments where you had writer's block or you hit the wall? How did you, how did you finish and complete the book? Well, what I had to do, I listened to a lot of music. Uh, that's in the genre. So I listened to, um, let's see, the Hatfields and McCoys soundtrack is in my playlist, and I also have some Django stuff in there. I liked that movie. Uh, just yeah. all kinds of music that inspired me. I just have to sit back and listen to it for a while, and sometimes, sometimes, excuse me, each song has its own story, its own chapter or its own paragraph. So I really have to listen to it. Um, if I really have bad writer's block, I will put it down and I'll write somewhere else in the book. I do not write chronologically normally. So, Well, you know, I, I think most of us don't think linearly anymore. We think mosaically. And so the fact that you wrote the book mosaically, I think, appeals to millennials, but it also appeals to Gen Xers and boomers. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in this interview have been asking, uh, I've been watching the Twitter feed on author Emmy Kruger. That's author M.E. Kruger. You see it there on your screen, guys. Follow her on Twitter and on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash author M.E. Kruger. You've been really good, M.E., about uh, posting photos and videos and, and you writing and behind-the-scenes stuff. And uh, uh, You've been telling me you've been getting uh, media interviews and requests for interviews. So I know as the weeks and months progress to the actual book launch, you're going to be doing a lot more media things. So... Um, from, from your fans, I've noticed here, they're wanting to hear from you. They love hearing from you, and that's one thing I, I've noticed about you is you're always good about staying in touch and keeping them posted. So any final words as we wrap up this, uh, this first interview with you? I am just really excited and really honored to be with a good publishing company. I couldn't have asked for a better publisher and a better person to work with on this project because this is my baby for three years, and I'm just really excited to get it out there. So this will be good.
Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful baby, and we're excited to help you bring it to the world. Thanks for your kind words, and uh, I know people and the world are going to be hearing a lot more about you, and congrats on this. And uh, let's blow it up together because I think you've got something uh, very fun here. And uh, we're going to be seeing it on a lot of airplanes and beaches and uh, reading groups and writers groups around the world. So, M.E., thanks so much for your time. It was great catching up with you. I know you're very busy and uh, coming at you from the writer's retreat here. And uh, the world is ready to see your book. So, congrats. Thank you so much, Michael. Bye-bye. Are we on? Is this thing on? <laughs>